All right, let's get this going. Community Service Advisory Board meeting on Thursday, February 16th, 2023. All right, uh, let's go around the room since we have a, a couple new board members. Uh, I'm Mark Dillon, uh, current chair. Go to my right. Sure. Ellen Coughlin Quinn, um, committee member since last year ish. Uh, Tom Partridge, I believe, first alternate currently. Uh, first meeting tonight. So. Karen Shoup, Town Council Liaison. Um, Chris Brigham, Vice Chair, I think, as of last meeting, and I've been on the committee for two years or so. Seven or so. I'm Rick Murphy. I've been on the committee for a number of terms and committee member. Uh, Alex Marshall, this would be my first meeting. I'm not even sure what. Well, what position I am? I think the... you are you're a voting member. Voting member. Yes. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Roger Shabbat, I think this is my third term here. How long in are the terms? Places, third term. Yeah, and how long are the three terms? Years. Go three years. Nine years. Okay. Nine years. Yeah. Well, I'm six. I'm working something. I get my third. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. And Todd Souza, director of community services. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. <laughs> Well, welcome. Um, thanks for coming tonight. Um, we've done our attendance. We're expecting Emily uh, to be here uh, shortly. She's running a little bit late. Um, so voting members, we have seven voting members now, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Seven mm -hmm. voting okay. members, two offense. Right. All right. So one, two, three. Seven. In the meantime, Tom, you're voting in case anything comes up okay. until Emily shows up. Mm -hmm. um, even as alternative alternates, I'm sorry, chime in on everything Absolutely. that you want. Um, all right. Um, welcome. We did that. All right. Has everyone had a chance to look at last meeting's minutes from 11923? Does anybody have any questions, comments? Do we have a copy of the last? Or was that in the email? It was, that was in the email. I have that right here too. So the only action items were voting of the minutes. Uh, we went over resignations. We had the nomination, Art Chair. I nominated Trish, Art nominated Emily. Trish was appointed. Uh, we voted to table the recording clerk for tonight. And then um, two recommendations came from around the table. Well, one was to put money in the budget for community center land um, purchase or acquisition, and then uh, funding in the, in the budget proposal for uh, grant writing and engagement services were the two other ones. Um, and then we set our agenda items for next meeting, which were uh, finish the review of master plan and receive any discussions in that timeline, and then uh, discuss board goals in your packet you should have received council goals which i do have up on the table here for folks as well so that was the condensed approved for minutes version so so uh i'm moved to approve last meetings minutes second. second roger again any questions comments seeing none all in favor you, oh, right. you abstain. Yeah, uh, that's that fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, open the uh, meeting for citizens' comments. Don't see any here today, so we'll close that. Um, next item is the election of officers. Uh, just going to table that for a little bit later until Emily shows up. Um, so next community service update, finished parks and facilities master plan review and discussion. So first off, let me apologize. Um, I said I would try to get a Cliff Notes version of the master plan, like where things are in there to get to you. Um, I had a quick conversation with Art. Every time I started something, I was focusing on what was important to me. And so I just stopped. 
I just I called Art and I said, I'm going to stop doing this exercise because I don't want to drive anybody's conversation or what's important to who or highlights. So, um, uh, so that's where that kind of left up. But where we left off um, was on page 84 last time of the document. And again, just high level stuff of how this was put together. And um, uh, just comments and things we can use. So this was the uh, maintenance operation analysis section. Um, again, uh, for Tom and for Alex, uh, the beginning of this report, you have a chance, it's just all the data and all what they've seen. And then the back appendages is where everything is as far as maps and surveys and comments and all the, all the stuff that's you know, kind of that if you run a deep dive into that. So um, that stuff all lives there. But in this maintenance and analysis section, um, They've gone through a couple of key points here, um, and uh, we shared some of these in the presentation. But um, you know, on average, uh, a, a typical Parks and Rec department spends uh, anywhere between you know forty four hundred or twenty between twenty forty four hundred and twenty three thousand dollars an acre on, on their park maintenance overall. Um, we're about nineteen hundred dollars an acre. Now, again. Without deep diving into that, some acres cost more than others, depending on what we're doing with them, and others are freestanding green. So, uh, I, I think we'll seeing that we'll take a deeper dive as a staff to see where we're spending, you know, more of that percentage of acreage. But, um, you know, that, again, those are national standards versus um, in, in every park system is, is different. Um, uh, another uh, key note on that page where, again, we, we've got a lot of, uh, in the survey work, talks about in here, a lot of park satisfaction with our parks, but a lot of citizen comment regarding updating um, and improving in certain areas with the growth of, th growth of certain things. Um, I did make a comment at the um, presentation, um, and, and it's a big topic now with the GMO and growth in town, everybody worried about growth. Uh, I said I could appreciate that. And I'm, this is the condensed version. I can appreciate that. What I'm more concerned about meeting is our existing challenge with the growth that's already occurred in our parks, the service levels, capacities, and those type of challenges. That you know, that's my primary focus. If we can plan for growth along the way, um, that's important too. But we have some direct challenges now. So, so we're way low for operating expenses per acres. Then, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. We're not even like they're saying. Typical agencies may spend. On the low end, 4,400. Right. And again, I haven't had the time to deep dive into where we spend, you know, like a, a lot of our, we have a lot of um, parks acres that are just, when they're unused acreage, you know what I mean? It could be, you know, at a willy, we're using three out of 12 acres. So what does that mean? So I want to just kind of look at the, the use of our acres, and then I'll kind of look at that number now that we have that benchmark. Um, and, and you also have to remember too, this is a national standard, and in some parks, um, are more city based and they take 24 seven people there all the time picking trash doing security uh high 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 use where um, a lot of ours are again i think we're a city more than a town but it's there's still town parks versus you know um bigger bigger places to compare to um on page what number was it so uh, again all these graphs are there and then the data from the surveys um and, and they're, they're backwards where depending on whether it's a satisfaction or improvements um, is, is where these are. And again, we've got both sets of survey data for the um, mailed survey and then the open survey, and then they put it together. Again, highest satisfaction is at our beaches and parks. Lowest satisfaction, uh, whether it's individually or combined, is in um, indoor recreational programming. Uh, sorry, is in um, indoor recreational facilities. Um, I was reading two things at once, which is never good. Um, but recreational program, you can see um, satisfaction is lower than other than these. But when you go in and read the narrative, the dissatisfaction is around uh, lack of space, fill quick. Those are all the comments that people have around dissatisfaction, can't get into programs. Um, so those were pretty strongly recognized in the survey. Um, you know, and again, there's these graphs throughout uh, needs met, uh, four town facilities, um, improved community offerings uh, was a big one, additional facilities and amenities, uh, more parking. Um, 
also made quite a few comments regarding these comments and feedback um, are a roadmap. And, you know, with council's leadership, we'll choose which direction we go, you know, in, in terms of funding and priorities. Um, it'll be every time we do something, whether it's a park modification and we go through open forum and, and park space development, um, there'll be chances for community input but we'll have to take these and put some sort of working priority into them of what's most important. We'll be leaning on some of these things to say, okay, these are the things that rank the highest. Um, and I'll talk about a couple of things when we get to the maps, but um, so, so that is, um, again, most important future needs, additional trails, community center, uh, make improvements or renovate uh, existing parks. Um, again, it's um, keeping up with things that need to be remodeled or uh, also just because we have three infields at one place, does it not mean that we shouldn't change one of those skinned infields to another grass field that we can put across field hockey soccer on versus a, a baseball diamond that gets used three months. Like those type of priorities is how we need to kind of work through that. So. A lot of stuff there um, on page 84, figure two. Yeah, that's right, just went over. So again, and the way this thing is, these are the priorities. There's still, even down the bottom, there's a lot of high priorities. Um, you know, if you get down into the bottom there, it's 70% is still at outdoor fields and um, sports and courts. So if you didn't take the time to read down through there, um, this really probably, Eight out of ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven out of eight of those are high priority in terms of people's desire. Um, and then getting into again, these are just a lot of these comments are um, just uh, educational comments regarding inspections or nuisance, and some of it is uh, telling you what the challenges are versus what ours are. Um, again. A big one here is getting into the recommendations. So they give you all the standards of quality. Uh, and these are things that they've kind of checked through when we've gone through. Um, uh, again, in this section, oh, future efficiencies um, talks about uh, the department uh, considerations for, uh, for maintenance and efficiencies. Sports efficient fields and complex would assist the department in delivering important services. Um, you know, that was heard uh, from a lot of residents during the process, but specifically for my staff as well. It's a big challenge when you drive 20 minutes to drive two infields, and then you got to go drive 30 minutes across town and drive two infields. Whereas if those were both grass and you had a, a facility with six infields, you get it all done in an hour. We spend an hour traveling to do those things. And so that'll be part of our ongoing process is to kind of figure out are there existing ways that we can be more effective with time and staff, but also meet some of these challenges. So um, uh, other talk, um, maintenance team spends a lot of time mowing with and around miles of fence buffers and areas. Um, like I said, last meeting, a lot of these suggestions when they've made them um, earlier in this whole year process, we've already started to do certain things like um, we're gonna be installing some new fence at, at the uh, Peterson this spring. We just had those infields done in the softball field um, we're going to be installing fence in front of both dugouts so we can fix the dugouts and not have caged in dugouts. But when we do that, we'll cut 16 inches or so on either side. And so we don't have to mow or weed whack right up those chain lines. So every time we do a modification, it's how do we reduce maintenance time and, and effort. Um, and so we've been doing those things ongoing. Um, again, comments, they made this comment a few times, uh, better storage for supplies and equipment. Um, you know, I, I would agree that we're pretty cramped for where we are. Um, eventually, at some point, I'd love to see better offsite storage. With see you, Jeff. We, okay. Thank you. Um, better offsite storage. If we had more specific facilities where I, my team could leave an infield drag at Peterson, and they know they could just get in it and and go drag versus trailer it, unload it, bring it back and forth. Some of those efficiencies. Um, and, and then again, when we talk about future park design uh, and when we get to a lot of these recommendations, uh, this is one they talked about. A lot of our facilities are, they don't have access except for the front. And what the challenge there is that when you try to get to do some ball field work at let's say Peterson three, which is on the Eastern trail, 
you can't do anything until June because you're going to run a truck up, you're going to be sunk. There's no way to get to that to get equipment. So it limits a lot of the time where we can do things. So when they talk about modifications, like in my crazy head, if I could wear the magic wand, I would get rid of the infields at Spring Springbrook, make it all soccer and put five cool, five fields at Peterson and drive a field right down the middle, road down the middle where I could get to all those parks mm -hmm. and do work on them all the time, literally from Alex versus hopefully I don't get this gator stuck or the dump truck is never going to make it out there. And so, so that's going to be part of our planning process as we talk about growth um, before we talk about buying more facilities. So I think we can do that exercise pretty good. Um, this number, again, I got to dive a little bigger into it, but you know, when we get to the um, maintenance chart, this 727, I mean, that's $727,000 of identified things on a basis. Uh, and again, when we get there, I'll show you, those are fully, and I asked them to do this, fully contracted prices. That's if I call somebody up and say, go do the whole thing. That's not us looking to say, okay, we'll, um, public work can demo the tennis courts, get them away, and we'll just have somebody come in and lay the pavement and you take care of the courts, the striping and the fence. So these are full costs. And we asked them to do that just so you guys are aware, because a lot, of, a lot of projects we've had over the last, well, I would say three or four years during COVID, but also before is when you're dependent on town staff and you're having staffing issues, the project gets put off and then it's two projects next year. And so we've asked them to say, you know, this is the full cost. And this is, if we're gonna prove it, we need to be ready to do this. And if we can, we will then say, okay, public works, my crew, donations, con you know, local contractor, how do we shorten that expense to the town? Um, but we have a lot of products we put off just because we weren't able to keep uh, keep up with the, uh, um, and when, when other departments are short staffed, then they get backed up as well. Um, Remind me the acreage again. What's that? What's the acreage again you're, you're talking about with that number? Oh, the- um, 727. Yes. Oh, so the seven, oh that, uh, sorry. The, uh, what was the total acreage? I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, it's 25 areas. I'm trying to think what the what the active acres is. I want to say it's like 238, 238 okay. acres. Uh, I can pull that number. Site evaluation. So um, they had gone through in this section here. Um, and this is just a different way to, to look at it. Um, but they went through, visited every site, took pictures. Um, I'm not sure, and I, I'll blow through these quick without not going into a lot of detail, because I'm not sure how many, if everybody here knows all the things that we take care of. Um, so um, again, basketball courts at Quinton Drive, uh, and they put all these in a chart form, uh, Black Point Park. Um, this, uh, without me going on my screen, uh, Jill in my office um, made that map. And so we now have this map, um, a, a, a fluent version on the screen where those properties are either town owned, conservation, uh, federal or state. Um, there's, a, there's a key in there for um, where it's like an association piece of property. Um, and so part of that exercise, hi Emily, um, is to gone through to look at uh, where they are in town and identify if you can see towards towards this end of town towards you know there's not much for recreational access in that um, and so we'll be this is all on the GIS so we'll be able to add this and start putting data to things when we move things around so um, this will be a help to us um, Blue Point Park Does everybody know what Blue Point Park is. Most it's people, yeah. yeah. Right I was going to say, I think we have a lot of people that live <laughs> there, but, but you don't know how many people drive flying by that don't know it's mm -hmm. it's there. I'm um, okay with that. Yeah, no, I, I, are always open. Yes, exactly. Uh, Blue Point Park. Uh, we have a hand in Clay Pitts Boat Launch. Um, there will be two kayak racks going down there this year for the lottery. Um, again, Turf Track Campus. Um, everything involved with that. Uh, Co-op parking lot. Uh, we do the trash and the bathrooms at that facility. We gave management a lot back over to PD about three years ago. 
Uh, so they deal with the uh, collecting of the fees and the management of the lot through the harbor master there because he can enforce that. Um, Eastern Trail locks on both ends. Um, Perry Beach, uh, Higgins, uh, Honeywell House. Uh, we contract mow that, but we do, we are in charge of the maintenance and tree removal. Uh, outdoor ice rink. This is going to be a conversation for a whole nother day, but <laughs> this one hurts my head. Um, spend a lot of time on ice that we don't skate on. So <laughs> it's a discussion where we want to invest time and money and what other resources are there um, that we can consider. So um, Memorial Park, that middle school complex in the back. Peterson, uh, this one is Pine Point Herd Park, uh, Scarborough River Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, CV Boat Landing, uh, Setco Field, the back of Garland Building, Skate Park, uh, Snowberry, the, um, the head of the entrance on that corner going to Pine Point, Ocean View Park, Springbrook, um, and then I don't know, they put it as a separate piece, but the Wentworth tennis courts um, and then Wentworth field behind the maintenance shop uh, and Willie Park. Wiley, Wiley? Wiley, that's what I say. Okay. Would you say? I think it's Wiley. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's that's my street. Oh, uh, Wiley, that's off of uh, Kenny. Kenny Lane. So if you go, if you're heading towards uh, Pine. Pleasant Hill behind the new development back there, right? Behind the old farm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about where um, I would say the ice cream take a right and head up. <laughs> um, food located. Um, um, yeah. So again, uh, more conversation about how they got to that point. Um, and again, this was uh, part of their action plan and recommendations where they go from here and goals. And so um, I like the way these are set up and I, I won't go through each one, but they've given us like this first one, uh, you know, the goal states continue to improve organi organizational uh, efficiencies. It gives us each one has a different amount, but uh, objective statements. And then they give you the data of what they heard, why they're making those recommendations. So then we can go through as a staff and um, uh, figure out how we get where we, you know, where we want to go based on some of these conversations. So again, continue like this objective 1.1, continue to enhance and improve internal and external communications regarding department activities and, and services. This is something our, um, our marketing uh, group in the department has been chatting about like, what's the way people want the information? Is it Facebook? Is it email? Is it still print? Um, is it uh, timeliness of it, where it goes? Um, we just had a conversation in the department. The brochure went out and in past we've held programming. It's like, so now it's like we've, we're working on when we get a new program after the brochure has been launched, how are we going to get out there? You know, and can we, can, by launching it now, is it better to hold it for a little bit or is it, can we still get it off satisfactory? and not have a program that we have to cancel. Um, so kind of working through those things now. Um, again, uh, objective number 1.2 is explore opportunities, to hire additional positions. They went through and looked at staff and touched on some of those areas that um, to make the type of recommendations they're recommending where those positions kind of should be. Uh, I will say some of these um, we put in this existing budget and we'll see once we get through the process um, working with the school to propose two new maintenance workers um, that hopefully if everything goes right, it'll be kind of like the IT model in our budget, school reimburses us. Um, but so in case somebody asks you, what, you know, the explanation here is the school is not getting two new 80 hour employees. The school is getting seven employees that do the work that needs to get done because some days it takes four or five bodies to get the three infields and the mow and the bathrooms clean to get, you know, JV varsity softball and middle school ready for a game. And so it's it, it, two people couldn't do the work just on campus. And so this is going to allow us to, and we've talked about this a little bit, some of our meetings, um, we probably spend 70% of our time on the municipal campus. And so this will allow us to kind of raise the, you know, balance it, where we can spend maybe 50% of our time and put 50% 
back into the youth fields and the programs in the parks where we're reg more regularly dragging, better mows, you know, better care as a whole. So, and that's kind of the ultimate goal here with that. Um, so we'll be taking that through the budget process. Um, so there, so there's a bunch of those goal to continue improve programs and service delivery. Um, and I won't read through all those objectives. Um, but again, a couple high level ones, explore opportunities with aquatic programming, um, uh, efficiently, um, manage existing program, develop additional recreational opportunities. Um, and that one they talked about, and there's data in there in the earlier sections about, uh, when we should time out a program, you know, how, how many we have, when we're in a good spot there, but then also what type of programming that people are asking for and which genre, um, Goal three, uh, improve and expand facilities, parks, and amenities. And so, um, again, the highlighted ones was priorities during the graph was trails and paths, uh, community center, key by aquatics, and then outdoor sports fields and outdoor sports courts. Um, there was a, there's a recommendation here, uh, upgrade comfort and convenience amenities at the existing facilities. Um, this is a big one for me, uh, addressing the ADA concerns on a contracted level, um, we had probably $200,000 of ADA concerns throughout all the parks. And a lot of those, I don't want to say a simple, but when you look at, uh, you know, we have bleachers and it's on a pad. The pad has grass between the walkway and there's no space on the side for um, the wheelchair. And so, you know, where we've got in the budget for next year to replace the, the four row set of bleachers on the 114 softball field on the campus. Most of that cost is the pad because now it's instead of being 30 feet, it needs to be 37 feet and then how it accesses. So a lot of those things are that. Um, a lot of it's the clocks on here. We're, 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 we're trying to go after some of these. Um, I'm going to propose like $50,000 in a budget each year to try to get caught up on some of these. Because um, some of these we may be able to do it pretty much paint cost. Uh, making sure we've got van striping in all the parks as far as, you know, handicap spots, proper signage, that stuff public works can do if they have time. If not, it's a contractor. Um, looking at how people get to facilities. There's no really ADA way to get to field two and three at Peterson. So those type of things, when we make those changes or any improvements, we should be making those along the way. And so those are things that we're targeting. And we've started kind of thinking about how to strategically go through those um, five is increased financial opportunities. They give us, um, they've given us a bunch of other opportunities to look at. Um, some things we can do internally, some things are outside contracted, some things are as simple as raising fees. Um, so looking at those different opportunities. Um, whoops, I apologize. Um, and so we'll work through those um, and then uh, improve maintenance and operations. Um, Again, it talks about staff here. Um, we have a really good, talented crew right now um, and uh, excited for the opportunity if we could add a few more bodies uh, to that team. Um, and then the way this next setup works here, when you get to the section B, the goals and objectives and action steps, they've taken all those goals and the individual objectives and broken them down with ideas um, they've given you an estimated capital cost, you know, an operational impact, and then a time frame. So when we pick up, like, okay, we, we think we can tackle, you know, the, the marketing goal right now. I can go here, and uh, they've, if it's an outside source, they've given us those estimates to say, okay, you need to hire an engagement coordinator or a grant writer, and here's the ways you can do that type of thing. So um, they've gone through and put all those, categorized them, and again, in categories. Um, and a lot of these through our, our staff time are things that we can tag off um, and, and put on uh, existing employees plates. Um, and so every goal is broken down that way. Um, a lot of these, again, will come down to uh, staff time available and funding allocated, how fast or what we choose and do. Um, and uh, and so that, that's gonna be a choice by the residents and by council on what we do or don't do. Yes, Trish. I know your staff works really hard yeah. and I can imagine there's not a lot of free time. So how do you anticipate? That was sort of my thing going through yep. this. Like, yep. 
yeah. how do we yeah we need more money we yeah need it, more bodies so i yeah it's been something yeah yeah and um, so oh, sorry go ahead how do you what do you streamline what do you drop off yeah to pick these things out yeah and i think it's a lot will be said in this budget i think that if we get a couple more staff members in the parks you know um when we brought casey on board our new parks manager um to a fault, I've said, I, I, I need you in less equipment as least as possible. You know, obviously if somebody's out, we need to get going. I need you to be evaluating, planning, double checking things, because um, that's where, so if we can get some more workers, that'll create more opportunity for him to do what he's supposed to do, plan, reach out. Uh, I won't have to go to little league meetings and soccer meetings, like, you know, those type of things. He can go there and have day to day and say, I'll meet you there in five minutes. Let's set up a time and walk this. And so I think we can make a lot of gains on the park side with staff. Um, and then ultimately we'll have to start prioritizing. Like we're, we're gonna, you know, uh, if we want the parks mode before a game day, this is what it's gonna take, some, some, some choices. Um, on the staffing side, I think some of these, um, every staff, no matter where you are, has opportune pockets. When they finish a project, when they do things, um, so I think that we can tag these some, some often, and when we put the timeline together to say, okay, you know, um, Brandy, I'm going to give you this project to look at, um, I need it done in these five weeks, you know what I mean? And give her enough head time so she can be picking away at it, uh, versus nobody has the time to say, take five weeks and stop what you're doing. That's a whole different thing. And so some of these may take longer than others, and then we'll have to identify. And I think that's what, when we put the priority list together. What we can or can't do. I can't believe you're still doing passport day. That feels like it's duplicated other places. Um, and I don't know what the lift is there. It's but. because there's always a waiting, uh, a wait list for each day, I feel. Yeah. Here or yes. yeah. elsewhere? We can yes. do passports seven days a week. Yes. A lot of places have shut okay. them down. Mm -hmm. And so we've changed. So two things to lower. I don't mean to de no, 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 no. But those are choices. So those are choices we made where we used to do passports and bring in. Six people, get some money three, four, three or four people doing passports, and then I'd be there making photocopies. We would try to get as many people as we could through the door. Two years ago, per COVID, we said, okay, we're going to take appointments, and we're only going to do so many. We'll bring in three people, the appointments, and before it was, uh, and now we're only doing Scarborough residents. We're only giving the benefit to our That's residents. Good. So we've started to make some of those where before we would do 50, 100 on a Saturday. Now we may do 30, but they're all lease residents. And some, it's an opportunity for families because they can't always get here during the work day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's our kind of one reach where if you've got a family and you want to take your three or four kids out of school, show up here. And so that's kind of why. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lift. Um, but again, that's why we only do like two or three a year on that. But again, those are that's an example of how we've downsized and shortened up the scope of what we're doing. Um, and we've done that across the board. Um, a lot of times now we'll... Um, uh, block off a whole passport day. We only do passports on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, we'll block off a Thursday because we know two people are away and we can't do everything. So when we get more than one person on vacation, it's like no passports that day or that week because we don't have the staff to do it. So so anyone can walk in at any time and get a passport? No, you have to make an appointment. Oh. And right now we're like two or three weeks out to get an appointment. Interesting. So, um, so again, the, all the goals are broken out that way. Um, I won't... Uh, or you with that, so yeah, it's super helpful. And then they give you, you know, again, some strategies here, um, how to implement them, suggestions right down to um, broadening staff, overall staff understanding, giving the project to somebody that's outside of the division to say, we want you to be in charge of it, be a little more incorporated, get a bigger understanding, create some future growth in staff. Someday we leave to get someone else that's trained. So they've got a lot of those type of comments. Um, happy kiddos. Um, I'm going to skip over this trends analysis because this is all national data. I did have a couple of youth sports groups call. And so that's why these are all kind of appendix like, hey, our little league is growing. This says it's not. No, go back to the header. That's why, that's why reading the whole thing is important. It talks about the national trend. And that's why, that's why something, you know, tennis may be super popular in other places. Pick a ball is rolling the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, baseball is growing back. Softball is starting to rise up a little bit here. Soccer numbers are off the chart and continuing. And so um, 
we've got more flag football teams than we do have tackle football teams now. So those are the type of things that, you know, they give you the trend data, but it's more importantly about what we're doing and what Scarborough is, is doing. Um, uh, so just, I just want to make that comment again, we talked about ADA compliance. Where was I just want to skip down to page 270. Hopefully my computer doesn't freeze. Because um, again, all this is all survey and data response. Oh, come on. So this is the uh, matrix chart, and I, I apologize that it's small, but I'll try to pull it up here. So what they've given us, they've gone through every park or every facility and talked about all the things that need to be done and um, a cost, again, the contracted cost and what year and kind of in a lifespan. Like these are things that need to get done now. These are things we can plan for. The nice thing about this, and I've got um, Casey starting to look at these, there may be paving, striping, irrigation issues in some of these parks in year two. Um, as, as recommended, but um, zero to two, but there may be some in two to four. And so it's like, is it better to take some of those and group them together and, and have some of those things fixed? Um, but so each park is broken out that way. Uh, again, when you read some of these, these are not all have tos. Some of these are have tos. Some of these they're giving you, um, some of these are giving you opportunities to, um, you know, like one of them at the basketball courts talks about, you know, digging out the hoops, putting in new backboards and new, and they give you that price because they're aged and they're crooked. And so, yeah, you can unhook them, straighten them and paint them for two grand, but for 15 grand, you get all new ones, the whole nine yards. And those are things that we're going to start talking about the youth groups. You know, the example with Little League this year, you know, that we did the project at Peterson, we paid for a portion, they paid for a portion. I think the other groups in town will be like, okay, if we do pavement, we do the hoops, those type of things, and we could put it in a plan now. And so um, this simply, and this also saves me a lot of time to having to do research to say, listen, before we even start talking, this is a $7,000 project. Do we want to talk any further? If you do, then we can dig into a little more versus everybody wants something until they see the number. And so, um, but so all the sites that I showed you before, they're all broken out. Um, uh, and again, you see more uh, white and blue than you do green and, and yellow. The green and yellows are probably some of the bigger parks, so, uh, or the bigger projects, I should say. Um, for example, and I'll show you the map, but like middle school. So behind the middle school, we've got a softball field and, uh, sorry, softball field on the right, uh, baseball on the right, softball on the left. And they both have grass outfields, obviously but we paint multi-purpose fields here, lacrosse or soccer, and those are on the dirt to get that field to fit. So this tells you a option, and I'll show you the picture in a minute, shows you all the things that need to get done to those facilities and their existing use. B is an idea that I gave them um, that I think we can make work is, um, that's a big number, I'm not sure it would cost us that much. Um, because of our internal capabilities, but taking the infields and flip-flopping them. So moving the baseball field to the softball field and putting the, the softball field, the baseball field. And the reason why is, um, if I can get to it, I'll show you. Um, this. Um, um, so these maps, they've done a site for every facility. Um, all the things on that list are where they were talking about it. They've marked them. You can see, you know, they talk about ADA cement walkways to the beach in certain spots to get people down to the beach. So if it's on the list, they've identified it at the parcel. Um, and then they've gone as far as, you know, what the existing things are. And then like you can see here where my cursor, is, those are handicapped spots that need to get updated because um, they don't have van parking. So they've gone right down through to, Fixing that. Um, middle school, Mark Park, middle school. So here we go. So, what I was talking about existing baseball, existing softball, right here in left field's a Vernal Pool. You can't go any further into left field because there's a Vernal Pool there. And so, but on this side of the field, 
you can go further into this area before you get into any wetlands. And so by flip-flopping these infields, now we can get a true, call it 300, 310 outfield and actually varsity or JV could play there and not have to, JV travels to Willie. They don't like playing on this field because it's like 230 down the line and every other fly ball goes into the woods. Mm -hmm. um, but by doing this flip, so you can see where the existing dirt infield is. Mm -hmm. You bring this into a softball outline, that's the edge of the softball lip right there. You can fit a full size soccer field in the existing grass. You do the same thing over here. Yes, you got to clear some woods, but before you get into wetlands out here, you can make a full baseball field in this line right here is the dirt, is the edge of the grass. This one will be a little tighter, but it's only one corner of it. And so um, these would be these would be much better used fields more often. Um, nobody wants to go down there, especially the varsity teams, because they're running through halfway through dirt. Um, so uh, these are kind of the suggestions they've made throughout the um, throughout the report, uh, right down to, you know, drainage lips, cut this, missing an ADA sign here. Uh, this fence rail is broken. Um, you know, where's the, you know, drainage covers twisted. Um, you know, again, uh, CHA, Jason did a great job, Scarborough resident. Um, and so he spent a lot of time in the parks. Um, so he, he did a, a really solid, um, so our facilities that way. Existing condition and then potential options. And again, I will say this because I know it's being recorded. These are just their visions. You know, when you look at um, Peterson, it shows uh, bathrooms, dog park, baseball field, turf field. Like those are, they were showing you all the things that could fit on there. It doesn't mean that needs to be used that way, but it gets us to a point of thinking outside the box that it's just not the existing facility. And it goes back to the comment of, are we using them the proper way for the needs of today? Um, so I think that's the... Uh, Can you just clarify something yeah, for sure. me? Yeah, uh, yeah. The implement where it has like um, implementation, is that how long it's going to take to complete the project? No, that zero to two or two to... Yeah. Yeah, no, that is the year we should be thinking about starting that process. Oh, okay, okay. So they went through and, and um, looked at lifespan yep. and, and maybe that could be a title there that I could ask that, but that's kind of a, a lifespan replacement where they're looking at that fence. And then again, their judgment, we probably get three to five years before we should be budgeting money to replace that whole length of split rail fence at, at Willie or at Peterson. So um, okay. are there, do you know if there are any projects that have money in more than one column? Or is it just like, if it's a two to four year lifespan of that project, that's where the total amount is for that item? Yes, for that item. And what, what I just got the Excel sheet of that and I've sent it over to Casey. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do now is take that, spend an afternoon coding, putting another column in and coding. We haven't made it up yet, but like A is handicap, uh, B may be infield work, C may be tree work. Mm -hmm. So then we can do that and then data sort to say, okay, now I have another way to look at it that we've got 17 ADA projects and we have 10 infield projects. And when we go to do it, it's like, oh, we can prioritize and break them out by year. But the way that chart is created, that's the funding that takes for that identified project at that facility. And so- um, Has any thought been put into like looking at where the location of each of these things are and then approaching? So for example, the one that stands out to me only just because I live nearby is yep. there's, um, uh, uh, Higgins Beach. Yep. Like, um, I know that this project costs twenty four thousand because that's the estimated cost for that one section that would fulfill that community yep. need. Um, uh, so, has anybody looked into approach each of the different neighborhoods and saying, "This is what we evaluated for your neighborhood. This is how much it's going to cost." You know, how does the community residents of that area feel about? putting in money towards this project to excel it if that's something that they're interested in doing? Um, that hasn't been done. No, nope. it, it doesn't mean that a conversation, I think that um, part of the, you know, the plan we get going is getting into the name. Like when we go to do a project, um, we'll be bringing the Hurt Park project back. I've got the, the project scheduled to start talking about in probably two years. Um, but we do go to the end of the neighborhood and say, you know, this is what we've planned. Do you want to? Um, 
We've never asked. It doesn't mean we can't have the conversation and say, hey, you know, do people want to kick in? Do you want it done faster? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Help we can always we can always ask the question, but we've never taken that tact. We've tried to show them that this is what it takes um, and then gone through whatever sources is going to fund it. So uh, but we can definitely. Because there's obviously a lot to do and everybody's going to want everything all at the same time. But if you approach the individual neighborhoods and say, like, this is what we've identified in your neighborhood, yep. if you want it done faster, you can help contribute some yep. funds to do so. Yep. Um, so, again, I think the heaviest lift for us out of this is going to be spending that time and recategorizing that spreadsheet. Because then there is cost savings in combining projects, right? So if we take a bunch of paving um, or a bunch of striping to say, you know, we've got these products, can you hit them all? Now it may be a number that a company may be willing to bid on versus I'm not going to go spend twenty five hundred dollars for mobilize my whole crew to just do Peterson Park. Mm -hmm. So if I've got six parks, they're going to go strike, then that's a that's something worth bidding on. So um, having staff now, we can start getting back to a more normal level of operation. Again, I can't say it enough to the people: if you're looking at these maps, don't freak out. Doesn't mean everything's <laughs> going to happen in that neighborhood. You you know there might not be a dog park in your backyard. So just it's conversational pieces um but so that's what i have as a quick update for the end of the way this report is put together um the only other thing regarding the port report is i i think uh and karen may know more than me i think that may be scheduled for march 1st for another conversation at the council level that i don't know so that um i think is the the target and so i'll try to confirm and let you know if that's what it is so i asked one, a lot of questions today that was not one yeah okay. no it's all good and again i guess um we've gotten some feedback from different council members and i've shared that with uh the consultants um and again this is an as soon as this we say this is our document that's when the work for us really starts right prioritizing what we're doing what kind of funding we have um everything else that's going on in town how does that affect where, what, um, for example, um, tennis courts, you know, um, got a couple different numbers in the budget. Do we completely replace them and do we just fix them to get them through? Um, is that site off the list for a community center? You know, and until that decision is like, no, then we're not gonna spend $500,000 on project. We're gonna need to spend 50 to get us five more years, but it'll still be safe, functional while we make these decisions along the way. So there's gonna be a lot of that going on so um that is the cliff note version of how this was put together and so <laughs> I, again i would ask if anybody has any sort of comments nothing is silly um or if they have ideas even if it's not about the report itself but implementation like emily's idea but we're always open to suggestions so um because i think you're right once people start seeing things and we do something in one neighborhood again we're going to try to prioritize the most important things um and tackle those and this year it's going to be a lot of the ada stuff is what we're going to focus on and then planning so it's nice yeah. so that's what i got for you you're almost as long as that back from the uh talking at town oh, council yeah <laughs> he did an amazing job i hope people got to watch the presentation i mean the fact that he ended up only getting a half an hour I yeah. thought he did a really yeah, good no, job. Yeah, no, James. I really like that team. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're right. good. So, where are they from? Barry Dunn. Uh, Barry Dunn, yes. Yeah. Formerly Green Play, Barry Dunn. One's from, well, they're both from Virginia. One's in the beach and one's in the so, Are those folks, Barry Dunn, going to be available to your folks as to explaining what so, they saw? So that yeah, so one of the things uh, with Barry Dunn, one of their statements in their, in their, in their proposal, they're, we're part of the Barry Dunn family. So if I want to call Tom Dell up tonight, he emailed me this morning. I said, I'm having a board meeting. Come by that. Event. They will gladly have a conversation. Um, they'll always be available to us. Um, I am trying to figure out how to propose. It might be a CIP item this year so we can start the conversation. But um, there are certain things we're going to need planning money for. So I want to, I'm going to talk to a couple of these consultants and say, okay, is there a number that I can put in the budget? So if we say this is a priority project, we can start getting, these can be taken further, right? I could call, you know, and again, I'm not sure, whatever, depends on what we do or our purchasing policies, but CHA does elsewhere. I could call them up and say, okay, what does it take for a full blown 
site plan to make that happen. And this is just an example where they can come back and say, okay, here's the amount of material need, linear, linear drainage, topsoil, boom, you should be already, you know, they've given us the numbers, but here's all the specs, put it out to bid. And so that's where um, a challenge for a municipality is, is that, um, and Alex knows this because he does Portland parks, is that when you go to do it, it's a year out. It's you're, you're going to get funding for a project now, and then it gets put out further. And it's like, I still got the, I still got the 911 right now. And so sometimes it's band-aid money. Like for example, with Peterson, we've got all these ruts and sinkholes because of the old dump. You know, we're going to cut those out and raise them this spring and summer, depending on when we can get out there. But that facility needs a whole new regrade. Um, but again, part of the process is if we're ever going to change the use, do we spend all that money now? So it's like we, we're, we're getting close to being able to say, okay, here's a plan and how do we drive those through um, so we're not reacting to the next issue. So hopefully that's where we'll be um, sooner than later. So how do you, on your last comment, how do you take a holistic approach on projects that are facilities that may be repurposed yeah, and so none of the decisions have been made to repurpose. So our goal initially will be to deal with all the safety issues. So I gave the example of Peterson. Um, last year, we went in and cut a new drain into one side because it was just puddling and flooding. Um, and then in the middle of the soccer field, there's a sinkhole. And so now the line goes like this. And so we'll go in, have, whether we have time or we'll hire a landscape company, go in and cut that saw it out, raise the hole, put it back. That'll get us back to safe level. Um, and we'll do, keep doing those things until we decide that, you know, is a time for a major upgrade. And that's, that's kind of where um, it was probably two months ago now, I met with all the leaders of all the youth groups, lacrosse, football, mm -hmm. um, soccer, and um, listened to all their challenges. And um, a lot of them come around facilities because when they're not, you know, if they don't drain well or they're wet, that's, you know, they shut those down so they don't damage the field, which reduces, reduces practice time. You know, they have to obviously take you know, mindful of injuries. Um, and so we're going to look at priority will be minimizing those to reduce those things. Um, and then obviously, as I would, every group wants their own priority done first. And so my, in my mind right now, um, I want to look at some of these projects to say, what gets the most groups the most effect? And in my mind right now, it would be um, um, making um, the one, sorry, Wentworth, the uh, Sedco field behind the Garland building is a little patch of grass um, that it looks like a tumbleweed parking lot. We've never invested in it, but it could be for a shorter dollar, shut down, stripped, sawed it, at least enough to make a place where you've got great grass that anybody can go have a lacrosse practice, t-ball, soccer, um, that gets us a, a, a highly a existing piece of parcel to be used more. Um, our biggest challenge is we have nothing that we can say, hey, we're going to shut down Peterson for the summer while we do work. There's no place to put all that. And so um, in my mind, that's why I'm looking at the middle school. Once we know that there's no school going back there, and you know that's not a school site consideration, then I'd push hard for that middle school, middle school project because that facility is probably the least used because of the dirt grass challenge. And so if we can make that flip, then it's almost like having two new facilities four or five months out of the year because people will want to go use it. And that'll allow us then say, okay, I can shut Peterson down for July and August and do this fix. Because you're talking about months of, you know, whether it's seeding or sodding or drainage or whatever it is, we just don't have the programs will be crippled if we say we're shutting a facility down. Um, but so hey, that's my point. Yes. It's in your brain. Yeah. Yep. How do you get it onto paper so that we have a timeline? Yeah. Exactly what you just said. Because there are a lot of those repurposing things are really exciting. Yep. How does that, what does that look like? I understand the yep. safety because you yep. got to stick with yep. the budget. But how do we take that to the next level? Yeah. So next year you come to us and say, we want to repurpose this and this is yeah. what we're going to do. And yeah. so that it feeds into the budget. Like, well, how does that? Yeah. So I've started and that's, you know, my capital improvement plan theoretically was supposed to be in by now and it's not because we just got this piece. And so 
What I'm doing this year is I'm putting some of these big, bigger projects, like the middle school one, I'm putting it a year, two years out. So somebody can say, Todd, what is that? And I can say, go to page you know, 284, and this is what we want to start talking about. Um, and then I need to be able to have the time, which I'll create with Casey's help, kind of that priority matrix, and then looking at what those cause and effects are, like what that means, Where's the best bang by spending that 300,000 right now? I can affect field hockey, soccer, and lacrosse. And I get JV baseball on campus and not off campus. That affects, you know, three, five, you know, high school level teams, JV varsity, mm -hmm. and then all the U sports. And then that'll trigger the next one. So that's where I need to take this and prioritize the timeline yeah. because it's not going to work. If, we can't do C if we don't do A. You know what I mean? And that's, so that's where, the, and they didn't give us that because right. that's our decision to make as a town, not the consultants. I mean, they could have done that. And that's, that's, that's set for failure because there's a dollar figure associated with it. Mm -hmm. It'd be different if the town said, here's a million dollars, Todd, build us the best plan you want. I would call them right up and then say, okay, I got a million dollars to you. What's the best way to put this together? Because they can put it right down to, signage in the park and grand openings like that's what they do it's hard the other way because we own it all Can that I work ask, yeah, go ahead. it's kind of a sideways question but yeah. it'll help us later in the yeah, process yeah. when you met with the private sports group yeah. do you have a concept of how much money they're spending out of town um these guys, not a lot because they're all grass. Bask, the inside ones are the ones that spend so all the money. Up. Dennis Meehan, every time I see him, we're spending over $20,000 for indoor basketball. And I think that would be great information. Yes. I'm going a little sideways yep. here, but when you talked about meeting with yep. those private yep. groups, I would love to know. Yeah, the indoor stuff out. is where they're going out of town. And even, for so example, Little money. League, uh, they're back in the high school now, but some years they have to rent because yep. the, the school's booked. They'll have to go to you know, the pitch or some other indoor facility and rent those spaces. So those, again, those are conversations, especially when we start talking about a community center. Those are all things that, you know, you may not charge or you may charge. That's a philosophical decision, but at least the money, if you did charge, would stay in town and you could reduce it philosophically. So that would be great data to have yes. when you're promote, when you're rationalizing why you need right. a community center, because it's going to come down to dollars and cents. It always does. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and that's some of the park stuff too. When we look at uh, how much time, you know, it's one of the suggestions in here, and some people may not like it, but turfing Memorial Field, just the athletic side of it, um, because of how much high school use is out there, how much time we spend mowing that sort of stuff. No, I'm not. Uh, it's but but when they're talking operationally, that's the best bang for your buck. You never have to shut it down, right? Raining, it's draining. You're playing. You not have cancer in 20 years. Yeah. But that's okay. Well, we got we're using cocoa right now. We, the new one doesn't have it's all it's a it's a wood product. But anyways, those are the type of you know those are the decisions that you need to make because we are not even as big as Scarborough is. We are not athletic land rich. We're not like a Bonnie Eagle or Cape or Falmouth. You go there and they've got fields that are just sitting dormant, and it's it's four inches high. And they'll go mow it, stripe it, and then they'll shut that one down and let it grow and do the work. We are not that community. And so we need to strategize how do we improve our maintenance schedules, but then fix some of those challenges along the way. So um, awesome. Any other questions for the moment? I got a whole bunch, but I'll, I'll hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can talk. I'm, I'm looking forward to them. I'm looking forward to them. Thank you, Todd. Yeah. All right, we're going to jump back to item six. Open up the uh, recording. What is it? It's oh, what was it called? The recording secretary? Or? Yes. I don't know. It's a recording yeah, secretary. Position. Okay. Uh, we held off last uh, meeting because we we're a few shy and had new board members coming on. And didn't have a chance to talk to Emily as she was away as well. Um, so I'd like to open up the table for nominations. If anyone new or existing was interested in the position, I spoke to Emily. She said she was interested. So I'll nominate Emily. 
Second. Thank you. No one's jumping? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, seeing no others, I'm gonna close nominations. All in favor of Emily for the next year. Thank you, Emily. Second was Roger. Yeah. All right, let's move on to item eight, old business <coughs> council goals. It's like a load of guns, isn't it? You guys, yeah, a lot of goals. You guys have a few there. I'm happy to say we've accomplished some already. That's good. Um, yeah. But so, you know, it's nice to look at the goals as a whole, but, um, you know, the goals that are specific to this board are obviously going to be under the strategic capital and facilities planning and one of the priority actions. And so John Anderson loves spreadsheets and he loves highlighting. So you'll see that, you know, this is in bold and it's a priority action. And the second one is to charge for an ad hoc committee with advising on the community center site selection. And the design budget estimate impacts and the committee shall also consider townwide space needs, including the library and the recommendations to leverage economies of scale and design of the building. Um, and so I will tell you that when we had our goal setting workshop, the only person who showed up besides town council was the director of the library. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I think I give her credit to that. She's very engaged. And so um, we were very cognizant of that and their involvement to have them included in this process. Um, and so, you know, just to focus on the goals as a whole for a second, I'll tell you that there was a lot of back and forth about this third one that's not highlighted. It's pursue land acquisition for municipal and school purposes because there was a little confusion or, you know, back and forth about, well, should we say we just want to get land for our school? Should we say we just want land for community center? And I think we kind of landed up, well, we're not going to prioritize who the land is for. And so I think when I look, when I look at that, I just want to say, you know, that it's not just for the school we're saying that we want to look at just to buy land and see what we end up using it for and i think also for a community center i think we've discussed we might already probably have we might have land already that we could use um so as a town councilor one of my goal one of my jobs is i'm a i have committees and i'm the chair of the uh, appointments and negotiation committee and the appointments and negotiation committee has been tasked with the ad hoc community center committee charge. So what we're working on right now and what I have and what we're planning on getting forward is the charge for the committee. It's like right now, Todd and Tom, was it just, was it you and Tom worked together? Do you want to talk about the charge a little bit? Sure. We drafted it up and got it to the appointments committee on their request to kind of gather things. Um, we just took some of the data from the previous ad hoc committee. That was the, the group that did all that work, you know, almost three years ago now. Um, and so really it was just kind of language and priority. The biggest difference between this committee and that, that committee had a specific charge to analyze an opportunity at the Downs. Right. It was land, building, operation, feasibility, reimbursement, revenue, like, and then all the challenges that go with it, you know, TIF and all those type of things. That committee was amazing. And the work they did would have probably cost us $100,000, $200,000 mm -hmm. easy. So we still have all that work. We have all the survey work that was done over the past three years as part of the I'm pointing at the computer like it's still up master plan uh the community uh, survey that was done by council and then the survey that was done as part of the community center ad hoc committee previously so we have three current surveys and they all have pretty similar themes which is exciting that the need or want hasn't changed over that period of time so this the, the main difference here is that we, we recommended in the council, I mean, excuse me, the appointments committee to tweak it, that we start by going to uh, this committee and the, the, the committee makeup is two members from this committee. And so we, once that charge is approved, I'd come back to Art or Karen Wood and say, you know, we would like to take nominations or rec people that are willing to serve on that committee, fill it with two people so they'd be the liaison back to this group. Um, I'm not sure who would do it, but somebody would reach out to the previous advisory board and say, we want three of those nine members. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where one of the things I was going to talk about tonight was I, because the charge that we were given was saying, we're going to have two members from this board. We're going to have four residents 
that will apply at large, yeah. at large. And then we're going to bring three from the old ad hoc community center. In my mm -hmm. mind, we need to confirm first that three people are actually interested. I already know at least two, point. two do not. <laughs> I'm all set. Yep. <laughs> um, I think there's probably people here like I'm all set. Yep. And I think one of the other things I really want people to think about, I did an ad hoc for the charter review. It is a commitment. It is this is a big deal we need to consistently meet when you i mean when i was on charter review we had subcommittees and we were meeting i don't think it'll come to that and i i will try to get a better grasp on the commitment but it is it is serious and so i think as you know i might say oh well i would love to have someone serve this but they'd be like i can't get yeah. the time the difference too with this one and i'll just so everybody's on the same page is that this one in my mind is more about this committee is going to be the voice of the community to the consultant we hire. We're, we're drafting a, an RFP in the background right now of kind of looking for a consultant, what it would take. The previous board, we met every other week and some of those people spent hundreds of hours, you know, drafting, designing. This board I think is going to be more about making sure that the, the things in your charge are being met and that, that a lot of that work is going to come from the consultant because it's going to be okay, we want to talk about land and design options. Well, they're going to go do that, bring them back to the committee, and we're going to be like, that one doesn't feel right. It doesn't look like Scarborough. That doesn't, you know, those type of things. So it's going to be more about ensuring that the charge of the RFP is being met and that they are representing the wishes of Scarborough, you know, and, and where I see the committee being the most support to this project is, um, and uh, I'll, I'll, at one of our upcoming meetings, if I if I can get it on the agenda, I've got Jill working on um, a vision board of a community center. We've got stuff that I've put together for years because, and one of the things that I'm putting in the RSP is I want a company that has a strong track record of coming in and educating the community on the decisions that need to be made and why you make them. You know what I mean? And I'll, you know, Jill and I met today and, um, I'm off next week, and so she's going to spend some time putting stuff together, and then I'll throw words to it. But the first, you know, decision on the community center: what is your lobby like? And what I mean by that is, is a lobby where there's a front desk that's three feet away from the door, and that's the checkpoint. And like, where's your badge? Where's just like that's a that's a safety gate mechanism. Is your lobby something where you're gonna have 50, 100 people you show up and it's like, hey, I'll meet you for a cup of coffee or you know, I'll drop, I'll, I'm gonna drop my daughter off and we'll swap, you know what I mean? Like, is it a social gathering place? Um, and then you check in and, you know, on the back side of it is where you go to get into the facility with the things that you pay for, or is there a combination? You know, Those type of things are how the building is gonna function, right? And only residents of Scarborough will be able to make those decisions, how they want that. Do they want a place where they can have to pay to get through the door? Or is there a place where you can go in and sit and just, Roger, let's meet for a cup of coffee and check in, you know? And so like, those are the initial parts of a building. And so when you get into that design phase and how it operates, those are the super important things because um, I've said this numerous times, I don't think designing the building is gonna be the hard part. I think making everybody happy and everybody understanding how it needs to function to meet the final goal of whatever that is, that's where I think the ad hoc committee is going to be the most important. Like, hey, we're proposing a 10,000 square foot gymnasium. Well, it's got one full court and two sideways. Well, people may be like, oh my goodness, we need to lean the other court because we've got, you know, all these type of things. And then there's a revenue driver to it. Well, if you can rent three courts versus two, what is that projection? That's where I think the committee just ad hoc will be super valuable because that's, there's some things that are, break even decisions and there's some things that are community good decisions and then there's some things that are philosophically like are you charging or not charging for what or not you know past prices um senior call those type of things those are all decisions but you can't make those after the building's already designed because you know there's a chart that i have in my office where um the bigger community centers recoup the most money because the smaller ones don't. Let's say you have one small meeting room. Well, if if you know Emily and the Girl Scouts are meeting there every Tuesday, and I come up with another new program, I got no place to put it. So like you can't expand stuff. And so that means I either got to kick Emily out, or I got to shorten her time, or like I said, you can meet Alex with your group, but it's not until eight o'clock at night. So those are those are decisions around revenue, and so that's why the consultant helps us a lot. That's what they do. So the timeline is right now. We'll 
we have, I'm hoping that the appointments committee will, will finalize this charge at our meeting in March. So then for the, the mid-March town council meeting, whatever that is, this, the third Wednesday, they'll approve the charge. And so then when that's approved, then we can begin the process of filling the committee. And so we would put applications out to fill the four spots. And then, I mean, I personally would probably just want someone to fill out an application anyways from here, yeah. everyone to fill out an application if they're interested, because ultimately, so to clarify, this is not my decision to fill the, to, um, to fill the ad hoc committee. So it would be ultimately what I do is we bring the recommendations and the town council has an executive session and they fill the committee. And so the executive session is actually pretty common, I guess, with the ad hoc committees. And so the town council can just have a nice open discussion about how to staff it. And so, I mean, you really have to be mindful about what you're doing and you wanna have people who have strategic skills and certain different values that they can bring to it. Um, so that's, I'm also on finance committee. So we're, I'm thinking by the time that the budget season's done, we'll hopefully have some choices and some selections done. I can look right now, the draft charge that I have is saying that they want a report to town council by December 1st. So, I mean, ultimately if a committee is what together by June, July, I mean, you know how much, you know better than I do. Yeah, it'll be tight. It'll be tight. Cause if you get, so then we need to do it sooner. Yeah. yeah or, or. The report will get here later. The question that the key is getting the RFP done, and that's what I'm going to after I get budget done to hire a consultant because that firm is going to be the one that does a lot of the, the heavy lifting. And that's really they're going to come back and say, You want these six things accomplished? We can do it in six months, we can do it in four months. We can that's going to take a year. The advantage I think we have is that we have all the survey work done. It's going to be more about holding public forums and public sessions to say, here's what we heard before and here's what it could look like. Are you still on board with this? And the educational pieces. And so I think that's going to expedite our process as far as the, the design and that piece. So that's an advantage we have because we've done a lot of the steps already. Um, but I, I couldn't in good faith say that could be done in six months without seeing some of those pieces. So um yeah that may have to be a asap based on consultant type thing so are you um are you going to indicate specific skills that you're looking for in so and that's i think the discussion that we'll have at the appointments and negotiation committee meeting next month is that's the sort of discussions we have at those meetings is you know what type of skills are we going to be looking for because then because when we go to town council to present it we really want to you know, have the backing for why we're proposing these people and why we want certain, certain what we're looking for. And so there will be two, there will be other spots. So like there'll be, um, there'll be the, the positions I mentioned, and then there'll be two town council liaisons. I think it'll be me. And then I think it might actually be John Clucci, who is on the finance committee. With me. He was one of the liaisons to the last. Okay. Committee. And so, yeah. yep. So that makes sense. He's the connection. And so then we'll have someone from the library board and then someone from the school department as well as actually. And then it, we will be encouraging people to come. So like, I know there's a lot of other stakeholders involved who are, yep. I think definitely will be invited. So out of our goals, I think that's the one that I guess directly affects you guys mm -hmm. the most. Um, the, the only other, it, um, I made some notes on the other two that I think this group at some point will be was, um, you know, the sustainability and the conservation. Uh, Karen's also the rep to the Parks and Land Conservation Board uh, for the council. And so I support that committee as well. Um, and, and part of that process is, um, you know, at our last meeting, we talked about um, this 30 by 30 goal of how many conserved acres we have in town. We have, to Karen's point earlier, we have a lot of acreage in town that isn't designated. And so we have some that's in conservation and we have a lot of town owned property. And so, you know, one of the things we talked about last meeting and, and Karen brought it up about an open space plan about what we have doing that re-inventory. Um, but some of the low hanging fruit is, um, what do we designate a piece of property we already own? Is it just live in open space? Do we say land trust, this is great for you. Um, and that's where I think, you know, the committees and the councils will need input even from this group, because it's like, we don't, we don't know what the value of that property is. Let's just not give it away yet. 
you know, or once because once you put something with a stigma, whether it's conservation or easement requirements, that limits what you can do on it. And so if we're not ready to work through that, so um, and then the other one is the transportation. You know, a lot of their conversations around it's connecting sidewalks and trailheads and that sort of stuff in the pathway. So again, where I think this group can help, obviously any input would be great. Um, but this group is really good about getting the word out. You know what I mean? This group, you know, and I think that's where some of the things that um, when, you know, I had made mention to Tom when we had a discussion about the ad hoc committee is like, yes, we need people with certain skill, like construction and you know those type of things. We also need people that are good at rallying. Yes. Like that's a skill, you know, yep. some people don't like to go shake doors and rattle trees, you know what I mean? But, but that's a skill yep. and I'm not good at it. I'm, I'm not putting my hand up. You know, you want me to work 50, 60, 100? I'm, I'm your guy, but <laughs> go knock on doors and sell cookies. No way. That's never happened. I got you, Todd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's never me. But so yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff going on. And I, I'm appreciative of council trying to categorize these things mm -hmm. to keep things moving. And that does, it's a lot. So, but yeah, so there's, there's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot here. Yes, I, I mean, there is. John Anderson is super focused and super driven. Um, I Like I said, I think a lot of these are attainable. I think we're very focused and working on them. I look at a lot of these and we're already plugging away. So I think it's exciting to me. And these are single year rules only, correct? Correct. Yeah. And so like the 30 by 30, I mean, you brought it up. That's like my passion here. And yeah. so that's that's one that we're hoping will continue to carry on until it's 2030 and we can say did we reach our goal yeah. um what is 30 by 30 so that is like a, i mean i don't I, I don't i'm probably misspeaking but that is that was introduced by the president and it is a national goal to preserve 30 percent of our land and waters and so what we are working for on that side and is basically where are we at scarborough and so we don't have 30% conserved. Our goal is by 30, can we attain that? Do we even have enough left to attain that? And so the last time we did an open space plan was 20 years ago, I think. 2002. And so this is this is what we're, we need right now at this point. And I know, I don't think it really touches this board as much, but I mean, it is, a, and that was a question I actually had for you is I don't know whose budget that comes out of. I didn't know if that was like a planning request or if it's a community services request. Uh, I, I think it could land in all of it. Probably yeah. more of a planning request than yeah. it is a, an us request, but um, yeah. you know what we're at now? About, I mean, you haven't what? done anything for the percentage of land <laughs> No, we were no. just at that meeting. What, weren't they saying 23%? No, it depends I don't on, want again, to say the biggest something. conversation is do we include the marsh or not? Because it is. That, that's, I that's don't think a, we should, but anyway. There's, okay. I, I see both sides of things, yeah. but there's, that's, I think that's like the first decision. Yeah. Do we include okay. the marsh? Because that's a big number, mm -hmm. you know, or do we say that we have this in the marsh? We know we have that and we're proud of that, but we're going to, this other 70% of Scarborough is only 15% conserved. So we're now to how do we get the other 15%? Like that's, <laughs> that's the, the exercise. And Karen asked that of all the boards, like, do we or don't we? That's a big decision because that's a direction of metric, right? That's mm -hmm. how you. Is that calculated into the whole city, like the size? Square footage. Square yeah, footage the in general, like yeah. without categorizing it. It's already calculated. Yeah. It's calculated. Yeah. part of the mileage. Yeah. And I think, I think, and I, I'm not an expert yet. I think it does have to do with if you're conserving something that's usable. So when you're right. talking about the marsh, I mean, are we right. really conserving it if it's we can't use it yeah. or build on it or develop it? Right. And it might be that we don't conserve the marsh, but the conversation which somebody mentioned at our board meeting was, do we do we count 200 feet around the edge of it? You know, because that's usable. Like you can walk up to it. Right. You, you can know what I mean? Off. You can fish out or your homeowner, right? Like some some of the properties go up to it. So like, what's the metric? And that just has got to be thought out and set. Because that drives it's definitely recreational yeah. to use of that space. Right. It's, yeah. Oh, it's huge. It's, yeah. yeah. So either way, it's a positive. It's just you know how what the goal wants to be. So so. So what's this board working on? Well, <laughs> I'll let Art take over here. But we said last time that we were waiting to hear what your goals were. I know they talked about the community center being, um, and like I said, I did note in the budget as requested that. You know, I'm going to put a placeholder for conversation when I get to the town manager level. And if it makes it to finance it or makes it to council, great. But 
put in a placeholder for community center. Why is it just a placeholder? Because that's all I can put in. You know, so I'll put it in my budget. I'm going to put $500,000 for a community center land acquisition. It's got to get by Tom, it's got to get by finance, and then it's got to get to council. And it won't become real until it hits the dominoes and biscuits the whole way down the line. Um, but so it'll be one of those things. And at minimum, it'll keep the conversation going. Exactly. And so what, what normally happens is when a department head puts something in the budget and either if it doesn't make it by Tom or it doesn't get recommended by finance, when we do our presentations to full council, it's usually a slide. Department had recommended community center property. Department had recommended second staff person. And it's there because it does two things. One, it lets the council or the finance committee, depending on which level it doesn't get to, or both, that there was a conversation about it. It was a recommendation that we don't think we can financially meet because everybody's got all their stuff, right? There's like, I think, 14 positions being proposed or something across, you know, so that's not all going to happen. But it's one of those things where you got to acknowledge it because if you don't, a lot of things don't happen the first time. Yeah, but it seems like if it's on this list of the line item, pursue land yeah, acquisition so for municipal and school purposes. I can tell you last year, town council had goals. But nobody knew them. Yeah. They knew them. They didn't follow them. Um, and so, you know, I think we are a different breed this year, and we're really focused on this. And so we'll. And there could be some other factors along the way too. Is that, right. uh, you know, we've got a school build committee meeting two weeks from now, and they're trying to. They've got two pieces of property they're looking at. Without misspeaking, one could hold a community center and a school. Mm -hmm. The other one couldn't. So if one of those opportunities come up, then that's a that's a game changer. You know, and so those th there's a lot of other stuff happening that why that may not need to go through or, you know, keep going through. And I know the other thing council's done in the past too is they've they haven't sometimes haven't approved large items. They've approved them, but they haven't voted them in until later on because it doesn't doesn't affect the mill rate until November when its projects have to get on the ballot for certain things. So sometimes they'll continue that work to say we'll consider it but we want to finish this process out in other, other areas. So, um, but I will, I will make the recommendation and it's, it's on there and um, keep that piece moving. Like I said, I would. So awesome. Thank you. All right. Our goals. What do you want them to be? I think we should continue pursuing a community center until there is an ad hoc committee. I think that should be our priority until we're told to come off that. If somebody that. else is doing that job. Again, especially given that we've all seen this handout that says very clearly, it's a council goal as well. Yep. I didn't know if you guys had pulled any goals out of the plan that we got, the parks and facility master plan, or if you thought there was things that we could do. And I, I, I know I'm going to keep saying this, but I know the last time I had said maybe we could pursue or investigate the idea of a park ranger. Maybe we could reevaluate fees. So, like last night, we we raised the mooring fees hundreds of dollars, and no one flinched because they haven't been raised in years. And the council completely understood it. And we got a thorough report on justifications for raising them hundreds of dollars. And they and I mean that's and I think that can be identified anywhere. I don't know if that's possible here. Todd knows better than I do. I think. Um, yeah, I, so a couple of those things we've chatted about. So I do have a um, full-time seasonal park ranger in the budget to bring to um, uh, one person to get the program started um, as a recommendation. Um, and so that'll land to Tom and that'll land to finance committee. Um, and again, there's a timeline thing because you need to hire somebody sooner or later if you want somebody doing it during the summer. So there's some strategy, you know, that may have to be an ask to council sooner or later because you're not hiring somebody to start doing work in May. Um, so would there um, be an opportunity for some sort of grant or? So, yes. So one of the conversations was um, there's a couple paths here. We figure out a way to partially, we agree on if there's, 
if council or finance and whomever agrees that we should have a park ranger, you know, we can look at different revenue sources that already exist within budgets that haven't been spent. Can we reallocate those for April, May, and June? Mm -hmm. Approve a ranger in the FY24 budget to have here her work July through, you know, end, you know middle of October and then start up next April. Um, that's one way. The other way is to propose it and then go out and build it and then, you know, shoot for grants. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of agency grants with the state that may be able to fund some of these. So it may be something or an option three is you get it going and you work for funding for next year to offset it. It, it just, mm -hmm. my, I'll be honest, my thing is if we can't get an advertisement out in March, we're not gonna, we have to build the program, train the person, you know, create what the program is, make sure that he or she is trained on all the beaches to be able to put a good product out. Maybe a little later because there'll be one person and they'll be evaluating what he or she's gonna do. Um, but you can't approve it in June when the budget, so again, it's a timeline thing. Um, and so uh, uh, that's where I think in the next month or so when budgets start hitting the finance committee, whether that look like. Um, but again, to have somebody from beginning of April to mid October uh, is about $21,000. And that is uh, materials, uniform, gas for the vehicle that's 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 everything you know um uh publication stuff to you know 500 all printing the handout stuff like so that is one person you know um and then the ultimate question then can you hire the right person yeah right this is not a job you fill for anybody like mm -hmm. you know it's not worth hiring just anybody you know he or she has to be able to make a difference and prove the program works or that is a challenge it's a challenge. So, so I, I'm on board with that, but what do we do to help that? I think it's, well, that's, there's nothing we can do if he's proposing it next month. Yeah, there's no. So what I was thinking was we create the data to support that. So let's say that fails yeah. and they say we don't want to do it. Then I think I think it's worthwhile to yeah. dive into what I was saying is let's show them some numbers, what the police are doing, what the complaints are, what the issues are, mm -hmm. and what people want from Scarborough. Right and do that. Um, I'm going to support it, but there's nothing behind me supporting it come March. Right. And so I'll just be up there going, I'm at these meetings. I think we should do it, but we haven't really done our due diligence. Um, and so, you know, I think it's great. We're going to do it. If we don't get it, I think that well, I was thinking that's something that we could spend time on figuring out how do we bring this to us? Cause yep. it is, it's super hard. Also finding the right person. I, you know, I was meeting with the police chief and talking to him about that stuff. I don't know if you could somehow combine something with them as well. I mean, I feel like there's a you know, a million different things you could yeah, do. There's internships we could look at. Right. There's schools for people mm -hmm. coming out that are looking at. Yep. It's it's the difference between this. The challenge with the PD is reserve officers. Nobody in this day and age wants to be reserve. It's just it's a challenge, right? You, you see the news all the time. This position is more of an ambassador to education and outreach, um, and it's a different tact. And so. I would hope we'd get some other candidates. So if it doesn't make it through, then that's definitely, I think, something we can work on. If it does make it through, I think it's something we can definitely work on because right. it will need to be evaluated and analyzed and be like, okay, if we had another 20 hours, what would that mean? You know, if if we could, we only got to go to three of the eight parks, you know, three beaches and five parks, two hours a week, like, you know, those are the type of things that, you know, for future, um, whether that's, you know, at the beginning or in the middle of it, I think that's, Outreach stuff. So, uh, but couldn't, couldn't we uh, say you know we want a park ranger and how how the town could benefit uh, a way to support it would be carry in carry out for instance you you're going to have some uh, in all the parks not just not just the beaches but in all the parks so you you would eliminate. A budget that you have of outside people coming right. in and picking out the trash. Yeah. There are some places they need to work. But uh, uh, I mean to pick up, but you you would have a big savings there. Yeah, you could tie yeah. it to initiative. You could tie it to you know like a carry and carry out initiative. Yeah. But again, it's we need to spend a little more time thinking about that impact of you know before you take take a, a contracted service away for for, for trash or whatever to be like what does that cause an effect? Yeah. Um, so this is, yeah. This is a good thing. Yeah, so you're thinking more of an interpretive ranger as opposed to an enforcement ranger. 
Mm -hmm. I think so. I think the, the conversations I've had with PD and past years, there would be some value in being able to write a ticket. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Sure. But it'd be a matter of how far do they go before they do that? You know? Yeah. I think it's a good line of first defense with some of the stuff they're dealing with at the beaches and parks now, and just the population is just more people. But they can't, you know, they're not, models they're not the half, police. Pentagon, so there's a lot of, and they're all doing a little different. Yeah. Yeah, we started with one and uh and morphed into now we have two full timers and a, you know six seasonals that yeah. join them. And I'm asking for a third full timer because right. the need is just so extensive. But oh, the ranger you're the ranger, yeah, you yeah, yeah. so so it's being very successful. It's very successful, but you can use it in a variety of different ways. Right. So we're faced with some pretty significant homelessness challenges, mm, yeah. which is a mental health issue for my staff. Mm -hmm. There's a, that's a whole other topic, <laughs> but um, in terms of like education and mm -hmm. interp you know, in <laughs> interpretive programming and, and getting, you know, working with, it's almost, it's almost like another rec programmer for you mm -hmm. to go do naturalist work out in the parks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can kind of tie it into the, into the recreation side of things to, to get kids and families and people out doing these fun, walks through the woods and learning about the trees and you know mushroom hunts and like there's all kinds of different things yeah. you can do with a ranger and they they can be very skilled and educated um, in that field but I, i'm a huge advocate of ranger programs because they're they're very valuable and you know dog off leash problems and, and littering and smoking and all these things that they can address yeah. while in a nice in a nice way, right? In a polite way, more of an educational sense, as opposed to an officer coming up to you and Absolutely. telling you that you're doing something wrong. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's a softer approach, yeah. um, but they're extremely valuable. So I would love to see, love to see you get one of those. That'd be, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be interesting too. This whole thing takes money. <laughs> and no one wants higher taxes. I hate to sound like a cynic. I've gone through this so many times before. One of the things we talked about last week, last time, and you made this good point, was fees. Mm -hmm. So could another goal be sort of, we talked about a grant writer, which was glaring in here, and it was like staff time. That's yep. why I raised that question, like, no way. Yep. <laughs> you can't have one of your staff people do grant writing. Yeah. It needs to be done, but I'm saying they're already devoted right. to their current job. Yep. So is it realistic that we, without getting in, like looking over your shoulder, but looking for other ways or alternative ways, evaluate the fees? Can we raise them? What do they look like compared to other communities? Are they, and one of the other things that we've talked about too, the philosophical thing, when I was reading through the program, there are options for some of these program, other programs. Do we need to do those? What would you charge? So maybe the, because just listening, we're hamstrung by the budget. Mm -hmm. We're kind of stopped until we get money in the budget. Are there things that we could do otherwise? I know you guys don't like it. I, I just, I watched the Coastal Harbors. They reviewed fees and yeah. they did, that's, that was a very board specific task. And that's what I think these boards are for. So I'm not saying we can't discuss the community center. I don't know where to take that discussion, honestly, at this level with this board, I guess. I mean, we can start whatever, it's going to lead into the ad hoc. Um, but there, there, I will say, we've talked about one of the goals we talked about, even though it wasn't an official goal, was more unification and collaboration among all the boards and right. communities in Scarborough. It's very disjointed now, right? So it even we know we want a community center. Can this board start to collect data that they can feed the ad hoc committee and start to put the feelers out to other communities and start to collect data. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll just tell you that someone came up to me after the town council meeting last night and they're like, I'm for a community center, but I don't think the taxpayer should pay for it. But to call like, them. but you know, I'm like, that's great. But as you said, the, the more the bigger you are, the more money you make. And so to me, that's why I asked, how much money are we, are we spending out of town right now? Because you know, my daughter's just starting swim. We're driving down to UNE hmm. four days a week. That can't be cheap. No, and I think, <laughs> and that's I think where your, numbers. Your advocates come. No, I think right. numbers. Yeah. That maybe putting. I'm, I'm just maybe putting those numbers together might be helpful. I don't know if this. I don't. I gotta look at that chart for the ad hoc. To be honest, yeah. I'm not. I don't. You know, I'm not sure if that's part of it. But I think. Well, ice, you can do it even if it's yeah. not yeah. the ad hoc. It's that's right. Part it's it's part of the RFP for the consultant mm -hmm. to look at or confirm those things because, you know, as far as validating. 
competitive, you know, inside and outside, meaning fitness, you know, not competing with private businesses. So, but I think those, I think all of those things would be greatly appreciated. Again, beach fees, you know, that's an ongoing, because I've got I the ranger and the be beach good. piece and that got shot down like a sinking ship last time for a lot of very reasons where, you know, diving in strategically to say, okay, yes. here's the number of passes we do by this fee rate. Right. We're protecting Scarborough residents. We've increased our fees. We can meet that need with this new funds. Mm -hmm. um, when do we have to have the beach fees in by? Because that's going to come up pretty soon. Yeah, too. I I don't know. I'm being honest. If if that would strike, you know what I mean. It, what do you mean? It's too late in this? In, I think it's too late. Last year, I brought it up in September because, you know, it takes the time to go all those things. And then selfishly, once they're passed, I've got hundreds of hours of sign changing, ordering signs, educational flyers. We sell beach passes April 1st, right. ordering right. stickers right now. So th that's what I started last time we did it in September. And so if it's yeah. something that this board wants to take on as a whole, that would be, I will get you the data you need throughout the summer. You know, and then you can make, you know, work through it on the fall, make a recommendation because then it needs to hit what if an ordinance needs to be changed or, or fee structure. I mean, now what's the schedule fees, excuse me. Those things take time to work through, um, but it'd be nice to know in my planning process that, okay, that, that's why I did it too. I knew, in, I was hoping I would know in January that the fee is going up to X. There's a potential for another $100,000 in revenue. Okay, let's propose a second ranger because now I can fund it. Let's, you know what I mean? Those types Absolutely. of things. Yeah. So are they staying the same then for 2023? Or will they as, go up by inflation? No, no, as of right now, they're staying the same. Wow. Can we put them, can we decide so right the, now? To even well, do no, but what inflation? we could do is spend, the, well, he, what he's saying is he presented it last September. So what if we spend the next couple of months? I'm actually really curious what people charge, like going to Old Orchard and stuff. Like, are, are yeah. we comparing to that? Because yeah. I think if we maybe spend this summer comparing what the current rate is for this summer, and then come back and say, holy cow, you know, look at everyone raised their rates, they're way above us. <clears throat> then you would then maybe in September when we're not so bogged down, start that process. Right, be able to be able to start the council process to get it changed. Yeah. And that's what it, it's a multi-step. I mean, it's the presentation, it's first reading, second reading, because it's on the schedule fees. It takes like two months to get it. We kind of did that the last time and made two very modest recommendations yep. and we did do the study of fees and i can get you guys all the spreadsheets that was during covid though wasn't that during that we were trying to be nice yeah. and we, we didn't want no, I, I would appreciate that work being done and coming from a, a citizen body you know so that that's be part of the whole review of yeah fees. yeah well then yeah. that's my recommendation and you guys and they can they can yell at me when you come and ask for them to raise the beach fees and you can say that was what i suggested i think that's good i think it would be super helpful to find out how much money we're spending out of town right now. Um, well, and also the whole dog thing, I to bring that up. it's gotten so bad at the fine point. It's terrible. So, yeah. and that spurred the park ranger thoughts because that was <laughs> conversations I had with some of the residents. It's and it's I a think, dog park. Yeah, um, it it's not a beach anymore. Park, and I don't even know that all the people there are residents. Yeah, no, they My come from other places. Because they can't take their dogs yes, anywhere Yes, because else, other so. towns have stricter dog laws. So they yeah. come to Scarborough. Yeah. Portland. Yeah. <laughs> so what did Portland do about their dogs? They sent them to Scarborough. Yeah. We didn't, no, we, yeah, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't send them to Scarborough. There were some <laughs> some sensitive areas that were being destroyed or impacted. I should say. How do you prove that? Uh, understory growth was being, um, you know, yeah, basically wiped out or was not allowed to revegetate. Uh, there's you know, Baxter Woods would be the the space I'm talking about, but yeah. we've also we also before my time there was removal of dogs from the Western Cemetery on the Western Prom that prompted folks to go use Baxter Woods, and then now we've protected Baxter Woods and created leash laws. Not we have not removed them entirely from the space. Um, we probably should have done that um, because there are still issues that are going on there, and and people are still having other dogs coming up against them, elderly are getting pushed over by some, like still challenges. Yeah, and there's schools that come and use some of that, the areas for their classroom spaces, but you know, we've moved them to other, like you can go across the woods to Evergreen Cemetery and use that space. There's Kapisic Pond, which is still in a voice control dog area. There's, we have all kinds of rules across the city at, you know, Eastern Prom and, other, and others, but um, what was, I had a question to you about, I'll, they'll come back to me. 
Well, who's taking care of voice control dogs? Uh, so voice control is a very interesting <laughs> topic yeah. because there's probably a four or five percent of people actually have their dog under voice control. Right. Less than the they consider the spaces to be off leash areas, and that is not right. what they are. They are they need to be under voice control. So you need to be able to your dog cannot control. cannot be more than 50 feet away from you. It cannot just run up a, up to anything, it cannot chase animals, cannot run up to another person. Needs to, be, needs to be able to come back to you within a, like, you know, three to five seconds. Um, so there's, you know, there's kind of, you know, <laughs> there's many challenges with the, with the mm -hmm. dog rules. Um, Here's a goal. Well, yeah. Up, it's a so that's time. two that jump out right now. Beach trees and dogs. Yeah. Yep. For this committee. Well, and I don't know, what do you mean dogs? Like, like just changing the rules? Supporters. Making the beaches more people friendly right. you're going to have some you, mm -hmm. you're going to have new you're going to have new people at your meetings so, so i think the goal and this is just there's no doubt about that so i think I, I i can't deny with all the challenges that we've just been discussed i think he, i would like for my own health and wellness i would love for you to figure out a Sorry way to you, politically Tom. frame a goal that evaluate the challenges at the beaches to discuss solutions to make it better for everybody don't mention not everybody that's a bad word. Well, whatever. But what you know, for the res, whatever you're going to choose. For town residents. Whatever you're going to choose. That doesn't say all of them. Yeah. Right. It doesn't say most of yes. them. It doesn't say dog owners Correct. or those who don't. Yes. For town for the community. residents. But you know what I'm saying versus identifying dogs yeah. or identifying kite surfers or identifying plumbers. Like, because right. th there are going to be other challenges that pop up when you start looking at it. Yeah. Whether that's access, yeah. parking, yeah. Yeah. those yeah. type of things, restroom right. facilities. Yeah. And that's where look then the master plan ties into like, oh, that. Well, they've given us that number. They've identified that. Now we have the data because we've got 16 complaints or three incidents or whatever. So I think a broader goal that, you know, to improve something lets you flex without upsetting the whole world. And we can tap into Portland's experience. And yeah. Kate did the whole thing with Robinson Woods on the yeah. dog control. Mm -hmm. So there yeah. are other communities that have gone before yeah. us yeah. that South we Portland. can use yeah. South Portland and yeah. say, this is what worked and this is what didn't work. Yeah. Cognizant of that. This is what we would do South different. Portland this is what we need to enforce it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. And Willard, I think. They it's a hornet's like, nest that you're going to open up when you start going down the dog. Yeah. Path. <laughs> So, that's well, right. Just don't yeah. post your agenda. So that's right that's before the you, <laughs> you survive. You, you, you survive it. It is just a long, yeah. grueling process. That's that's and the council you, reading reports from somebody from California how nasty we are of kicking them off the beach. But I also think there's other ways that this board could help because, <laughs> as a dog owner, I'm down to one dog now. My lab, come on back. My dachshund, see you later. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. he was on the leash. My lab goes. Right. You know, yeah. went everywhere you know what i mean so it's like yeah, yeah. different but i think that we do have a very strong starbo dogs group yeah. and i know they've been very receptive when i've reached out hey can you send an email out this dogs on the turf this is the second week in a row boom like so i think that if there's challenge that we're facing they've always been good and so mm -hmm. how do we have, use them as advocates to help our help yeah whatever uh, when i decided to run they though. sat me down and said if Town Council is revisiting dogs. We would like you to let us know. Yeah. So I think yeah. you guys have to yeah. let me know if you're yeah. in a committee. I'll yeah. let you guys have a month to decide if you want that to be your goal. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think that all those things, again, part of deciding if you do decide to review fees, and I think there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, why are you raising the fees for what? And that's why I understand what the challenges are. You know, and you know, my initial proposal was one park ranger and two, uh, three part time people because one person is not going to be able to get to every place in Scarborough enough. And then as soon as they land at Higgins, someone's going to say, "Why aren't they at Pine Point today?" Well, they can only be eight hours, and so that's why gathering that data, what people want, the, you know. Well, we negotiate. We figure out a way to pay for a dog park, and then they don't have to have the dog park at the beach, right? Yeah. Where's that ranked on those facilities things? It was on there. Little, dog park. So my question would be on the in terms of the fees and the timing of it all. So fiscal year July one. July one. Um, if you if you were to propose something yep. for a fee increase this spring with the budget, and you implemented the fee change for 2024, spring of 24, you're yep. only going to get a small portion of revenue <laughs> from the fee. Oh, Huh? Yes. Sorry. Yes. 
Well, you get, you get some of it. I guess you get the initial push from the residents for the you know their season passes, but then you get the the, the daily the daily rates would come in, and you get a portion of that. So you can would it make sense to build it in now so you have the fees, so you have the revenue, the increased revenue coming next spring. You're only going to be budgeting for a portion yeah. of it for this coming yeah. budget, yeah. but then you have the full you have the full revenue for the next budget. I think it's worth the ask. You know, because you're right. If we did some sort of something when we presented last time, just so you know, we we agreed that we weren't. It doesn't mean it can change. But we weren't changing the resident season pass, right? That we we were okay with that fee yeah. and giving some of the residents. It was the non-resident piece, and yeah. so I could very easily calculate if that went from X to X, how many we do. That's an easy number. Um, we could look back at history. Okay, we open the beaches up um, Memorial Day weekend, so really we've got about five weeks, four and a half that we charge in um, May, and then four weeks, five weeks in June, depending on what happens. So we could say, okay, there's a potential of X new revenue that could be in this budget. And then the full, to your point, the full next year gets split in half, right? So, so my, I guess my, yeah, I guess my question is when you change fees, do you have to implement them at July one, are you able to start? No, start early, and that's why. Yes, the beginning of the season. Yeah, no, at, at beginning of the season. That's why I tried to do mm -hmm. it last two Septembers ago, because I wanted to be able. When we rolled out the season passes April one, mm -hmm. everybody already knew that the fees were X and X, and the day fee was going up to Y, <laughs> and then that way, the first part of the season we could make mm -hmm. more money. well publicized and publicized and change do all the sign yeah. stuff and that sort of stuff. So certainly have plenty of time if you ask yeah. for it now to get the word. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. But we all can agree it would be a chunk of money if we did that. Yeah. To come back to this organization. Absolutely. I mean a big chunk. Yeah. I don't know, and this is just my I'm not sure who, if anyone listened into that last session of presenting the fees when we did it. Uh, and again, Karen's point, different board. Um, I'm, I'm not a pro, maybe Karen and I can ask the question, like, is there, is there appetite for that right now? Yeah. Um, I can do that. You know, because if it is, again, it takes two, at least two meetings of the board to get that through. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think like last time it was, it was concerned for the Scarborough residents. We had so Our many outs was concerned. Yeah, yeah. There was so many. We heard so many complaints about outside people using our beaches. <laughs> yeah. um, but then the council pushed back because they were concerned about the non-residents. Yeah. 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 I, I think you said it, and I'll repeat it again. Okay. I, I think like right now is different than it has been in the past. Uh, I, I don't think we have too many, I mean, we don't have the, the such no guys. They've gone, it's a different board, and I think we ought to try it again. I, this I really is a data-driven board. You know, yeah. they do like yeah. data. Yeah. Love numbers. They, you know, love numbers, how many passes impact, that sort of stuff. Um, That's how you're going to get past John Clucci. Well, and I think it's also how you're going to expand the program. John Clucci, his last name is, okay. You know, that, that, that evolution of the program. Okay. Um, what is the cost right now for resident versus non-resident? So for so the fee is the same for for it's fifteen dollars five day five day five fifteen pass. to five for a day pass, but for it's forty for a season pass for resident and one hundred and fifty for non-resident, and we were on the low side for residents when I did the study, and we were in the middle. The only ones higher for us were like a gun quit or some of those for the day passes. No, for the season pass so for a resident. One, what about the non? So resident. resident day passes is all the same. Right. Got one fee. Yeah. The theory is, if you're a resident, you don't go buy a forty dollar day pass, forty dollar mm -hmm. season pass, then you don't go to the beach enough. Like, yeah. And so, um, and the one fifty at the proposed, you know, when it was when we went to one fifty and fifteen, because it used to be ten to the fifteen, that told somebody as soon as you come to our beach ten times, it makes sense to go buy a season's pass. Mm -hmm. And it, by forcing people towards a season pass, we may make a little less money, some, in, you know, depending on the time, but less cash handling, it's right. less transactions, it's all those type of things. Mm -hmm. Some of those cause and effects. I really wanted $20 last time because we weren't running around thousands of dollars of $5 bills right. to sites, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. 
but there was some good comments. I will say, you know, even though I didn't agree with it, there was some good comments around, you know, like, okay, we could leave the $5 in the morning and change the middle to just 20 and leave the five in the afternoon. You know, it, there was a, the, the, the people that were complete, again, a lot about out, outside residents. Um, and it was that morning time value to them. That's a choice, right? Yeah. You know, so, um, but there was a lot of operational things. Forget getting more revenue to, to fund something. Program. When was the last time the fees were raised? Before COVID, three years ago? Yeah. Because I think it was 10 and I moved it to 15. Yeah. But again, it was that day fee is not too far out of line. You know what I mean? The, the ones that throw the scope out, it's your OBs because a lot of places have private lots. Most of OB parking is private. Yeah. Right. You go today, it's 15. You go on 4th right. July, they're saying 50 bucks. Right. Like, it's, it's, it's it's different, you know what I mean? So um, a lot of impact that we don't consider is a lot of our bathrooms gets used by the neighborhoods. You know, it's just not the 300 cars that go into Pine Point. It's everybody that lives there that's using the bathroom. So there's there's a lot of factors into what that money goes to support. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people don't realize that the beach is a self-funded operation. <clears throat> so when people say that my tax dollars pay for the beach, I say, with all due respect, it's self-funded. Yeah. So when we want to make these changes, right. You know, my goal is to be able to raise our reserve account. So when we go to do the Pine Point thing, I can say, hey, we've got $400,000 a year. We can do $40,000 for 10 years out of that account. The town only needs to kick in the other half. Like, let the fees offset some of those infrastructure costs. So before we wind down, I would like to finish up on the goals or at least make some more progress yeah. in our plan. We uh, highly rated goal or interest is the connectivity of trails which kind of falls between the cracks there are three different committees is parks and conservation land board transportation board and this committee that might be involved in that but it ranks very highly on this on the survey it's like 91 96 percent of people favor the addition of the wording is um, trails and paths that connect throughout the town. And so we have many properties that are scattered around the town. And it would be nice if we could work on paths or trails to connect those and even sometimes using the bike to work or bike to a store or something. So um, that would require a lot of coordination and collaboration with other stakeholders. But I think that you know, we ought, to, we ought to have a hand in that. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I think that's a desirable goal and it's articulated here. So I'd, I'd like to, I myself would like to see that on our list. Anyone opposed to that? I agree. I thought that would be easier to ask that. <laughs> That's great. I think that plays into the conversations we have with the conservation board and the open space plan and things like that. Because I mean, that is really one of the goals, and you know, that's the conservation and the land and conservation board. I mean, we're trying to identify land that can, and that's one of the goals of what land should be preserved and buy so we can further connect the whole community. If I can make a recommendation, and I, it's and it's not my thought. Somebody in this this board made mention in the last meeting or the meeting before, and so I don't want to take credit for it. But I think that once you, this board decides what are the two or three goals that okay, these are our top three priorities, then I think it's going to take another session to set the action items. Like, what are we going to do? That's mm -hmm. not you know that all. So like, pick the one or two topics. If it's and I'm making these up, you know. And improve tra trail connectivity or support trail connectivity work in town. Um, advocate, you know, continue the community center, advocate, you know, whatever those are. And then be able to take some time and say, okay, how do we help that? And what are our benchmarks to be able to do those? Because um, if not, then there's nothing to measure. There's nothing to come back and say, you know. Um, right. That sounds good. Um, so we have to review beach fees kind of 
put something on the table next month for that. Um, if you could pull up the old request, if you can find it from a few years ago, so we could compare. Yeah. Um, trail connectivity. We talked about dogs. But well, we're going to beach use, improve beach use. beaches Thank for you. town Thank residents. you. Thank you. Yeah, that's beach use. I think those are three great goals. And community center. And community center. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Again, the whole beach use and beach fees, those could be tied together. Like yeah. one supports the other. Yeah. Whatever your view is, however you wrote it. Yeah. Um, so on the community, so I'm just making nine minutes here. I'll pull the, what we proposed to council the last time. I'll pull any data that my spreadsheets from previous studies, like I, towns I looked at and what the fees were. Yeah. And did I um, pass fees? Um, okay. Great discussion. Any new business? Check that one out. Any questions, thoughts around the table? Open floor? It's always open floor. Okay, it's dinner time. <laughs> um, our next meeting is March 16th. Same bat time, same bat channel. Is that only the budget meeting or are we addressing other? Well, that's, we could, um, I'd like to review part of the your budget just to educate everybody. Um, wherever it sits and the scope of what community service does. Yeah, I'm fine doing that. Give me a kind of framework. Like, do you want the 10 minute version by division high level? Like, what are we, what are we, I mean, I've got council members for, that have been on the board for four years. That it's, you know, where the revenue goes, where, like how far, the way I do my budget presentation is we have the, the six divisions, we talk about what happens in each one and then where the revenue comes and what the offset is. And then during the budget process, we'll talk about initiatives, like what we're trying to accomplish this year and why we're presenting it. Um, so I just, you know, I'm, I'm totally happy doing that, but just give me some sort of expectation what you'd like to see and how long you want me to, to do that. Cause um, it, could, I, I, it could be a whole meeting. I, I think a quick note, 30 minute overview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would be fine. I mean, not to rush you or no. That's no. I, I know. I, I'm fine questions. rushing, but that shapes down what. Yeah. And again, whatever I do or show you or don't give you, I'm always happy to. You know what I mean? If somebody wants to come in, yeah, well, I'm good with that yeah. too. It's all public information, but I don't want to. You know what might be helpful is if you spend time on maybe some new asks that this board can discuss. So if you're presenting something, maybe that might be new. Or different in your budget, I can then say, oh, I was part of that. When I'm on finance, I can say I was part of that discussion. The new support, initiatives, yeah. To support it yeah. Um, and have the conversation to back up that support. Yep. I can do that. I think one of the key highlights, too, is where is the revenue derived from? Yep. Like what's self-sustaining and what isn't? Yeah, the way I do my budget breakout is that I've got my divisions color-coded and then I've got a revenue sheet that are color-coded and then each spot, so when like you look at childcare, Child care is yellow. I mean, intergenerational is yellow. And there's a line for what seniors produce, what camps produce, what, you know, um, what child care produces. And so those are the big numbers, you know what I mean? And so that's all. So you can see what each division produces, what we expend and what we produce. The only division that we don't break even in is parks. Everything else is self-funded. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. As so, it should be. It's almost impossible. Yeah. It's almost impossible. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's kudos to you know, everybody before me and staff, because it's just, that's, yeah. that's not the norm, you know, that's not always the norm on that side of things. So Scarborough's done a great job for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, so I can definitely, yeah. Awesome. Other agenda item, we can start talking about our goals and action, taking actions and uh, go from there. Can I make one, and, and it doesn't have to be next meeting, but does this committee want to have the community center conversation about, you know, some of those educational choices as far as what that looks like, you know, you know, what a building could look like, why you make those choices, not a deep dive, but like a high level educational piece. I think so. Um, I think so. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yes. Yes. Especially if we're going to have yeah. to. I mean, pitch it, yeah. Pitch it Especially so if we're rallying, yeah, yeah we're exactly. trying to tell people yeah. what it's like. I mean, right. Whether that's April, or, I don't know what, yeah. again, once we know more about the ad hoc committee, my goal again <laughs> of this is that we need to educate as many people so when they're listening to things, they can understand why someone says, hey, I know you really want 12 lanes, but that's twice the operational cost, that's twice the locker room space, that means you're having to bring in New England, you know, New England wide swim meets, not your local swim meet, you are never going in the lap pool because it'll never be able to offset the cost. Like those are the, you know, and so I think that this board needs to understand and Scarborough can choose to do whatever way they want to go, but those are the, those are the mm -hmm. decisions that people need to really, really understand what that means and that's why we're recording these meetings What's that? Is, that's why i wanted to yeah. start recording the yeah. meetings is so people can go back when we ask for a community center in a year or two and say well you didn't do your due diligence and this i mean the school is going through this right now yeah and yeah. it's it's there it, it happened but no one saw it they weren't part of the process and that's kind of why i really wanted to start doing it this way so, so if the next meeting is like art said is your the Bring the beach fees. I'll get that to you ahead of the beach fees, just so you have it, whether you discuss it or not at that point, you have it. Uh, budget and then look working on your goal action items, like April or May on the community center. I mean, just because I, I want to start Sooner, putting that together. Yeah, if we have time, we should start talking about it. Yeah. I just want to be prepared and not, you know, again, I think that the action item things are going to take a little longer than, you know, like that's a singular like. If we wait till May, will we have a sense? The budget's not passed in June, right? I don't, I'm new to the process. I can tell you my whole April consists of subcommittee meetings yeah, for so the budget. The, uh, so that's I really have the budget schedule right there. What? I know that I go. Well, I'm just saying that I think May would be fine to do the education for the community center. It's close to the budget, and hopefully we'll have a read somehow or other on where the direction is going. So I won't, I'll continue to do work, but you tell me when down the road you want that. I'm going to have my staff start putting stuff together so when somebody asks where you are ready. So, good. You're ahead. Awesome. You're ahead. Anything else, anyone? Thank you all. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Tom, for joining us. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. All right. Emily, thanks for taking notes. I can't be here. Okay. I know I'm on a permanent vacation, but I'm getting the hell out of town. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't be here. But, uh, All right. If anything is written up, send it all. Sure. Where are you going, Roger? Uh, motion adjourned so I can stop recording. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Everyone in favor? Yep. Good. <laughs> Stopping recording. I feel the pressure when that thing is on. <laughs>